The South Congress podcast is a lifestyle show that sometimes crosses over into mature territory. The views expressed are those of the hosts and guests who come from different backgrounds and experiences. Listener discretion is advised. All right. (laughs) All right. Um, So I am Cameron Hawkins. I'm host of the South Congress podcast. Um, Started a few years ago and we didn't really know what our direction was at first. The very beginning, we wanted to do a thing where um, I just wanted to interview my friends because all my friends were doing cool stuff. Like the original title was like Cameron Hawkins and his amazing friends. (laughs) So... Like as time went on, um, you know, my best friend kind of moved to town. We started doing like you know, kind of a lifestyle pop culture thing. But mm-hmm. I never wanted to stop doing the individual interviews because, you know, you go to the great big school that we went to, and you're around all kinds of famous people and super artistic people. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things we did a about a month back, you and I ran into each other, we and uh, we talked about your show. We talked about your performance and. Specifically, I wanted you to get on the show and talk about it. All right. Um, mm-hmm. Came on. We had a great conversation about art, about school, about sexuality, about romance. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, then we went to the show and I was just blown away. Thank you. Had, had a Thank ball. You. Oh, yeah. And then um, even the next week we got on and started talking about how good the show was again. Like I loved it. My co-host loved it. It was great. Um, and you talked to me a bit after we ran into each other and you were like, I want to do kind of a wind down. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah, Thank you for coming up with an official everything. title for this. Yeah. Kinda, or kinda, champagne down since we're drinking, more, drinking champagne. There you go. Right there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I just kind of want to sit back and let you get everything out of your system. Yeah. And let you kind of clear what's on your mind and get those feelings out. Yeah. The thing that I hate about doing podcasting and hitting record and stopping and uploading it, as soon as it's up, I think of... 15 more things I wanted to say. <laughs> and so let's see how much of that we can get out. Um, just talk to me about, I don't know, two hours after. Because right after you're doing, like, okay. you're taking pictures and videos yeah. and everybody's telling you how great you are. And you, you saw are. that. Th- yeah. There's a long line of people and it's very, it, that is a, a show in itself. Mm-hmm. Like talking to everyone about the show and their feelings and stuff like that. So yeah, just 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 later that night, how do you feel? Where's your mind? Uh, after that, I think at this point we were still at Ross Sushi, and I felt very hungry. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, I was really blown away, and there was a sense of pride there and a, a sense of accomplishment because mm-hmm. I didn't know how the show was going to go. Like when I did Love Jones. Not to sound cocky, I knew that was a great show. Mm-hmm. I knew like people needed to hear that story. I knew people felt that story. With For Lovers Only, I just knew this was something I wanted to do. Like I didn't want to talk about heartbreak. I didn't want to talk about another man did me wrong. I wanted to talk about how life did me wrong. Mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about how life threw so many curveballs at me that it impacted a relationship I had. And I was just elated and really surprised that people got it and people understood and people were like I feel it I've been there I am there I was there or whatever they were so two hours after the show I was in a sense of just I was surprised and shocked and just happy um, to have done it and that the show went so well because I was a ball of nerves before I started crying it was just a mess I hate when I spend, I don't know, a week making like a poster in Photoshop, right? Mm -hmm. And just all my time goes to it. And then like I'll upload it to, you know, a Twitter or an Instagram or a Facebook. And it doesn't immediately get 300 likes. It breaks my heart every time, right? (laughs) So talk about how long the process took. What got us to that performance that night? Um, So the process started in August. And there were three versions of the show. And the show was late February, early March? Uh, it was late. It was middle February. Middle February. Yeah, it, it was, was right Valentine's. after, yeah, 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 right yeah, after yeah. Valentine's okay. Day. Uh, the 16th, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I f- had my first meeting about the show in August, uh, mid-August. And uh, initially it was Love Jones, Growing Pains. Mm-hmm. And I had started writing. 
I had a list of songs that I wanted to like write to and like, I felt inspired by. And then nothing. There was no writing that was really happening. There were some pieces, but I just didn't feel... I, mean, I couldn't stand by them. Like I, I didn't feel comfortable with them. I didn't feel like they were deep enough. I just felt like I could, I could go a little bit deeper. So then I started listening to more music. Mm-hmm. And I listened to Amy Winehouse. And I was like, okay, this this can this can work. Uh, while that process was happening, um, Jaina, at a random like get together with friends, was like, "I'll do the show." And I was like, "Okay, bet. Let's you know." And this I is the lady who was singing. Yes, she's I needed, amazing. Needed a, yeah. yeah, she's she's great. I needed a vocalist. My co-host has a crush on her immediately. <laughs> like, he was like, oh, "She's amazing." I'm like, "Don't chill out." She's amazing. Yeah, she's really. Great. Uh, and I was like, "Sure, let's do it." Um, so that happened, and then. I started writing to back to back to black and I knew Jaina's range could do that and I was like okay I feel comfortable and I went and saw if Bill Street could talk and that was one of the most visually stunning films I've seen in my life mm. and the score um I don't feel like I'm about to cry now the score like reached into my soul and told me I needed a different story to tell. And okay. I cannot explain why that happened. But I saw this movie and I was like, I, because Growing Pains was about something different. It was about like fighting for love. And then Back to Black was about how like, you kind of go back to yourself. And it wasn't the story that I told the day of the show. Or it wasn't the story I told in the show. And then I, I wanted to, I realized I wanted to tell a story about how like, I am in a relationship and the universe is throwing everything it can to like stop this. Mm-hmm. But what do I do to heal? What do I do to kind of center myself? Like, how can I heal? And then I thought about, like, on my own beliefs. Like, I believe, like, God is a black woman who has been persecuted and continually is there for us. And so I was like, I want to include that in the story. I don't know how. And I, I wanted to talk about the last relationship I was in and how, like, by date three, I kind of knew I wanted to be with him. By date nine, like, I knew all the dates. And so I was like, how do you add all of this completely like changed the entire musical selection Mm -hmm. and found or really songs found me and i just started writing to them and i wrote the first piece uh in one night and then i wrote the beginning of the second and the third pieces the same night and then i knew that i wanted to continue the thread of dates because i wanted the audience to know like this is continuation Mm -hmm. throughout the pieces and then I knew that I wanted to end on an ode in my own terms of like what I believe religion is and my spiritual background. So I wrote the show in a week. I have not done that ever. (laughs) Um, But I had a lot to say. And then I really questioned myself after I wrote it. I was like, I don't think it's deep enough. I don't think it's, I don't know. I was really nervous about the, the reception and my friends were like, it's good. Like, it's great. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Like, this is good. Like, just keep it. And so um, there were some songs we took out the day of because they just, like, hearing them, they didn't really sound sound great with mm-hmm. the show. But um, I essentially just wrote the show and kind of stuck with it and then on February 16th performed it. Yeah. I, I mean, my thing was That's being there, it, it's really <laughs> adult. And what I mean by that is it's not just met a guy, love a guy, here's a story. Yeah. It's everything that's happened to me for 20, 25, 30 years, the good and the bad, it all adds up. And now I'm in a situation with this person who I care about. How do I make sure that that stuff doesn't break this? Yeah. And, and we and we all deal with that. Like I... Um, I just had like my nine year anniversary. Congratulations! So, well, I didn't know if you were gonna bring it up on. on yeah, the, on the show. And, yeah, but so what happens is super dope when you see. I, it was you know I would tell people about six year anniversary. Yeah. I tell people about seven year anniversary. You get to nine, you don't tell people. Yeah. And why don't you tell people? Because what do they ask? When do you get married? Yeah, yeah, and, and it's just or like, babies or stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and the thing is like the the totality of things that I've seen in life. The relationships that I've watched be great and be not so great, in my mind, a lot of those are because they followed uh, a policy, a path, mm-hmm. a tradition that 
ended up making them not what I thought they could be. Yeah. And so for me, it's always like, well, I, it has to be right. Because if it's not, it's unfair to her. You know? And so when you are up there talking about, man, this all this crazy stuff happened to me. And is this person going to accept me for it? Yeah. At, we, a lot of us live that. Yeah. And so for, yeah, you should have. I'm in there like yelling at the top of my lungs. Like, oh, yo, fuck that shit. And people are looking at me crazy. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm into this. Like, yeah. I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. So, like I said, you get to the end of it. You yes. have time to breathe and reflect. Everybody's telling you it's good before. Everybody's telling you it's good during. We tell you it's good right after. A month later, is it good? Like, like you, who right. are like. If anybody's going to be meticulous about it, if anybody's going to reflect on it, if anybody's going to notice what went wrong, yeah. it's you. How, right. how do you feel about that March the 16th? Um, well, obviously, I am, and my friends can tell you this, I am my worst critic. I I sometimes hamper my own voice, and I have to constantly mm-hmm. remind myself, like, you are great, you're amazing, like, you have a powerful voice. Um, March 16th, I felt... It was necessary, and I felt like it was an amazing experience, but there's still more I want to say, mm-hmm. um, and there's still, more, it's there, there's still more I need to say. So uh, by then, I started like kind of thinking about like what the, the, the end of the trilogy is, mm-hmm. um, but I did- You just have to get married. Right. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's the end of it. That, 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 yeah, yeah, I see. Um I did, like, take a moment to sit back and reflect. Not so much about, like, how great it was, but about what it means to people and, like, what these stories mean to people and the the art and the craft and the responsibility I have to tell these stories. And so I, I like to think of that because I feel like it grounds me and it keeps me uh, wanting to continue. And so when people come to me after the show as tired and hungry and a little bit intoxicated as I am, I really do appreciate those moments or however long I have to sit up there and, and talk to folks um, because it, it replenishes me in a way mm-hmm. that, that I can't, um, that you don't get from, from anything else. And it, it's just an amazing feeling. So somebody who saw the show asked, not just about you telling your stories, how comfortable are you telling other people's stories? And do you feel like you can put the same time and emotion and thought into a story that may not just be your own. Yeah, I think with, like, so when we do our theater show, The Mahogany Project, that's what that is. I think Love Jones was bred because, or born, let me say bred, was born because I had a really traumatic experience in a relationship and it, it silenced me because I needed to get those feelings out, but I was still, like, taking in all these other emotions from other people and so you're kind of pushing like the shit that you have to deal with down to help other people cope and deal with it and it it got to a point where i just could not write anything like i couldn't i couldn't do anything for anyone else so that's the essence of a heterosexual relationship right you push you push, push all your shit down you, get, you had a bad day you got to suck it up um well i think that's relationships well i, I, and that's I mean, also why i want to show in the show like if anyone comes to any of the shows i do in february i think they can honestly say like they have been through something that i talk about oh yeah like the feeling mm-hmm. of life getting in the way and you having to realize you look in the mirror saying i need to fix myself yeah like, regardless of anything else that's going on, like, I need to get my shit together. And one of the reasons I thought about my last relationship was because we had those conversations about it. And it's kind of like what you say, like, when you are in your nine year anniversary or your eight year anniversary or however long you're together, people have this pressure that they put on mm-hmm. you. And if you don't have your stuff together to be able to handle that, especially, I think, if you're a queer couple, like, because you don't see that all the time, there's just, like, It's still new, yeah. even though it's, you know, been around. It's it's it's, it's new because yeah. people don't know how to ask you, Joe, where the relationship's headed. Like, what are you guys' future plans? Like, we've been presented that, yeah. like, homosexual relationships are all fleeting and fun and... Just sex. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's what we've seen. And, yeah. and you know, we as... A society is a population. And so the idea of like these long term homosexual relationships, we, we 
We don't see them a lot. And when, you know, I, I'm around, I'm in the world, like, I'm very aware that these things can work for a very long time. Yeah. Like, it's, I think everybody, and I say everybody, like, has that gay aunt who's had a girlfriend for, like, 40 Forever. years, and you just, I just didn't know until yeah. I knew. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it seems uh, to work. You start putting stuff together. Aunt Jackie's not really my aunt, but she's yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there is, like, that pressure for, I guess, you guys to figure out what the normal is, like, what the baseline is. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying you have to live by that necessarily, yeah. but, gosh, I can't imagine. Like, I think about the conversations people want to have with me. I can't even imagine how people approach you about relationships in yeah. general. That's why you have a show explaining that's, them. That's why I have a show. <laughs> That's that's why I put it put it in the show. Um yeah, I I think people people definitely have questions um about relationships and I surprisingly, not that I'm a private person, but I do keep certain things to my circle. Mm-hmm. And not everyone knows. And so if I'm dating someone I'll post a picture, but sometimes that can be a very platonic picture. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think my last relationship, I was just a little bit more open than usual. Mm-hmm. And so that, that caused some additional questions because people kept seeing the same person, you know, on Instagram, Snap, whatever. Um, and that's not something I was used to, but it comes with the territory of telling stories and people wanting to genuinely be happy for you, I guess. Tell me about a misstep, whether it was this show, whether it's a previous show where you were like, Gosh, I wish I didn't do that. Um, I uh, well, I, I always wish like, that no, I, it all works. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I always wish that I learned my lines, but sometimes it doesn't happen, and I'm mm-hmm. okay with that. I've learned to live with that. Um, I think one of the missteps was in November. I we got approached to do a show for the state of Texas HIV AIDS mm. conference, and it was a very negative and traumatic experience. And I wish I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. I wish I wouldn't have put myself in the situation to feel like I am an afterthought, to mm-hmm. feel like my stories are not valid, to feel like we are literally our voices are being silenced. Mm-hmm. You don't want us here, and why should we be here? Yeah, when you explained that to me on the show, it was crazy. It was like they felt obligated to invite you. But definitely threw the red carpet in trash before you guys got out the car. We were coming <laughs> in the alley, yeah. like with the trash. Like it was like they snuck us in. Essentially, mm-hmm. it was like we want y'all to perform mm-hmm. after the entire conference is over. And so I just I don't want that feeling again. I, it was it wasn't even great money, but it was you know money in your pocket. But at, after it, I was just like, cut me my check and let's go. How different is it going to be for me who? I basically saw a one-man show, Uh right? Even though, again, great vocalist with you to compliment the things that you're doing. How different is it going to be when I see you with two and three and four actors? What's the feeling going to be? How how different is that when you're playing off of not just the crowd, but the people who worked on it with you? Uh, I don't know if I can answer that. I think it's a different vibe for me on stage because... Uh, one of the things I, I've recognized in writing and, and doing the shows is I know my voice and I know the voices of the other actors that mm-hmm. are with me. And so I try not to overpower anyone. And I think uh, we all have been comf- You'll You'll get a sense of how comfortable we, we are with each other. Like we know each other. We know what who's going to forget their lines. We know who's going to go off script. Like we know there's just a cadence and a rhythm that we know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you'll get that. Even if we don't have a show and we have to go out there and BS it, like, in November. Or if we do have a show. Like, and you, it's just, it's different because you have all these queer folks on stage just kind of living the, in their truth. Whereas the the one person show is really just me and my own story. But I think you get more variety in, in the theater shows. And I think it's a thing where in theater, you know, people are really silent and you really have to, you're forced to process everything right there. Like you can't have, like at the show uh, for for lovers only. It's like, woo yeah, I fucks with that. It and was literally theater. me saying, woo yeah, I fucks with that. <laughs> but yeah, in theater is not the same, and so you're really kind of forced to sit and think and process. And so um, it's not as I don't think for lovers only is heavy, but. I do think our, sh- our theater shows, we do have more comedic moments than than I do. 
what's a story, and even if it's not the third part of the trilogy? I already know the third part, but... What's a story that you want to tell that you feel like isn't being told to its best ability right now? You know, I never like to tell the stories like this. But uh, there is one story that I... I don't, I don't not think it's not being told correctly, but I don't, I do think that we ha- we can tell it in a different way, mm-hmm. our group, and that is uh, black queer folks with the criminal justice system. Um, I think, in, in, in terms of police brutality, I think we have a unique perspective, mm-hmm. and I think we do have some pieces that talk about that, but, you know, I always feel like you can go deeper. I do think we can talk a little bit more about the, I don't want to say the HIV AIDS crisis, um, but I do think we can talk a little bit more about that experience. And uh, I also think that we don't talk a lot, like we talk a lot about dating, but not into detail as much. Mm-hmm. But I think there are, those are the three that are like on my mind about going a little bit deeper and writing some more pieces to them. And, and so that's what I'm working on in a couple of months. A thing that happened not intentionally but kind of intentionally again when we talked about you doing the show for me i I told you i was like i want to i want to tell stories that concern me i want to make sure and i when we say words like ally and stuff like that it gets weird and misconstrued and people want to wear capes and stuff like that You know, I I genuinely think that we're brothers and we're peers and stories that are important to you are going to be important to me. And it really had kind of an unintentional effect because we do uh, the show with you and we go to your show. You know, we take pictures and we talk about it. And then all of a sudden, like people who have never approached me about working on stuff creatively wanted to talk about it. And I think that like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not some, some great person, but I'm just a person who values people. Yeah. I think they, they realize that like this, this one girl wants to do like a true crime show and this other girl works at like a gentleman's club. She's like, we got to find a way to do a show there. I'm like, I don't know, but we'll, we'll try. <laughs> like Peter wants to go, but I'm like, you got yeah. a job to protect. <laughs> but no, um, it, it did create a situation where people saw that it wasn't just two guys sitting in a den talking about guy stuff yeah that that we were more layered than that and like literally after i had those conversations with those women like that's when i saw you that same weekend it was like joe i need you to do a half hour a week or whenever on my network so um even if you haven't kind of fully formulated that even though you sent me information that i have i've been busy kind of Give people an idea about the audio that you're looking at doing, like, like which isn't. I mean, I, I do think that podcasting is a performance, yeah, but it's different. It's more a direct conversation with yeah. people, and it's not. Even though it's artistic, it's a bit more free flowing. It's yeah. not something that's written down. Not something you can practice. Like, yeah. what what is it that you want to kind of get out of this? What is it that you're presenting? Yeah, I talked about this at the show. I was just like, it's coming. You know, be prepared. Um, By the way, Peanut was mad that he was like, he could have shot it up the South Congress podcast when he said it, but it it was fine. He also didn't use his third drink ticket. Oh. I I, was on the flip side. First of all, (laughs) I got the numbers of, like, how much people bought, and I was like, what the entire fuck? I think a lot of people Uh, didn't see the third ticket. And then I got a lot, I got the final numbers from that, like, two and a half hours we were there, and I was like, you're welcome. Oh, you hooked him. Oh, yeah, you uh-huh. did him a favor. But uh, it's, I, I have Luscious as friends and people that come and see our show. Um, but what I want to do, I just want to tell stories at the end of the day. I just want to give people a platform, and not even give people a platform, but an opportunity to tell whatever creative endeavors that they have, to talk more about it. I wished when I was growing up that I had an opportunity to hear Elon Harris. And who was the first black gay author I read in his creative process, or James Earl Hardy, the second black author, black gay author I read. And since then, I've read other like black queer authors. Who's the third? I'm kidding. Uh, okay, 
Um, but I wish I would have kind of heard their creative process. And mm. that's one of the reasons I want to do this is because people always ask me about my creative process and like what it means and how I do it. But that's what the podcast will be about. Like, I don't want this long, drawn-out stuff. I've done it before. I've done the podcast before with friends. It's great. It was wonderful. I had a great time. But I want people to have an, an opportunity to tell their creative process to help the people behind us. Because we all have a voice. And there are people who don't have that opportunity to do their art. But they want to know how to do their art. Like, so if they're growing up and they may not be out... Um, or they may not just be in a safe space, even if they're not queer and they're straight, but, you know, they don't know how to present their art in a, in a way that their family may not agree with or whatever. I just want to give people the opportunity to, to talk on air about, like, what it was growing up, how they picked up their pen or picked up the paintbrush first or picked up the microphone, like, who gave them their start, who are, their, who are the people they look at. Because who I look to for guidance is completely different than some other people. And we can all, like, have inspirations, but who are your inspirations and stuff like that. And so that's what it is. I just want to tell stories. So the process with Joe Anderson Jr. Yeah. We'll coin it that. Yeah. Drink to that? Drink to that. Joe, I appreciate your time as always. Yeah. Joe Anderson Jr., The Mahogany Project, Four Lovers Only, one of my favorite shows I've ever been to. So can we talk about, like, um, oh. before we leave? <laughs> so, and this is like a little snippet, I guess a preview of the next show. Because mm-hmm. I already have it. I, I was just telling uh, Ashley about it. And you, because you were there. Um, I'm really excited about the end of the trilogy, and I've been really thinking about... You know, I thought about... When you think about trilogies, the third movie or third act is always bad. and Or it's not as great as the second or the first sometimes. Mm-hmm. So what can I do to make sure that that doesn't happen? You gotta shoot somebody. <laughs> like a character has to die. <laughs> ah, kill Jay-Z. Um, and I am happy to say it's gonna happen. You know, the third part, the, the trilogy is ending. I think I have a title, but I always change the title, so I'm not gonna say it. But I, I will say, Love Jones was the hurt for lovers only, was the healing, and this third one is the hope. And one thing I want people to walk away from the next show is I want them to feel hopeful, I want them to feel confident, and I want them to know that they can get past any hurt or pain, and they can heal, and we can all be great. And so... I'm excited to say that I'm going to take a sabbatical soon to start writing that show, but um, I, I, I have another story to tell, and I'm excited to tell it. That's all I got. It's perfect. <laughs> it's it really is. So, yeah. Um, Cameron Hawkins, host of the South Congress podcast, Joe Anderson Jr. The right. co-creative director of go. <laughs> The Mahogany Project, and... Since I'm not being humble in 2019, I am a uh, an artist in residence at the University of Texas. Texas. Congratulations on that! Spring hey. 2019, fantastic! <laughs> I already got my check, so I'm good. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess that'll do it for us on this yeah. episode. Joe, thanks so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Always, always. Bye. We have to do this one more time since you ruined the first. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I had fun. South Congress and the Pro Wrestling Torch East Coast cast have two online stores to buy shirts, hoodies, stickers, mugs, notebooks, and more. Visit redbubble.com and tpublic.com and search Seahawk to see all of the merchandise. We run specials every few weeks, so join the South Congress and East Coast cast Facebook fan pages for all the details on our online specials and promotions.